Good Ash Wednesday to you. Some who are participating, watching this day have ash kits. And if you have one of those, inside is a little container of ashes and oil. There is a napkin and there is a swab. So if you are watching and you have one of these, I want you to make sure you get that out and have it near you. And if possible, you might want to be in the kitchen or someplace where you don't uh, stain any fabric on a nice couch or chair. But you want to put that aside. If you're watching and you don't have an ash kit, that's okay. Continue to participate. And later, uh, when we trace the sign of the cross on our foreheads with the ashes, you can just do that with your finger. In fact, even if you want to get a little dish of water and do that with water. Uh, that would certainly be appropriate. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of God's salvation. Return with all of your heart, with weeping, with fasting, with mourning, says the prophet. For God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, declares the psalmist. So let us be reconciled to God through our Lord Jesus Christ and receive a new and right spirit within us as we receive His grace into our lives. Let us sing together two verses of I Surrender All.
you see it. I'm not wallowing in self-pity or anything, but I am going to tell you it's been a rough couple of years. Just a few years ago, I went to the doctor, was having some pain in my feet, and immediately said, I know what's wrong. You've got plantar fasciitis, so I have to buy these little inserts to put in my shoes. I still can't believe that I have plantar fasciitis because my grandfather had it. A year or so ago, I had some trouble swallowing, went back to my doctor, who still has acne, and he <laughs> says to me, he says to me, I, I, I think it's acid reflux. Is there any stress in your life? And I said, well, I got two teenagers at home. I'm in a denomination that's in turmoil, may come apart, might not have a pension, but little, little stress might, might, might do it. And he said, well, if it's not stress, you know, somebody at your age, it could be several other things as well. I've changed doctors. I had my eyes examined. And the optometrist says to me, are you having any trouble out of your left eye specifically, maybe some blurriness? And I said, yes, I am. And I can't believe that you can tell by examining me. And I've been telling my wife, she thinks I've been imagining it. Can you fix it? And he said, no, you're beginning to develop cataracts. How can that be? Lisa's parents had that surgery after they retired. I told her recently I wanted to make a big purchase, not in 2021, but in 2022 or 2023, after I had been able to save some money, been having trouble with my hands in recent years. I do a lot of typing, so they suggested it was carpal tunnel but also maybe a little arthritis, which my mother suffered from in her 70s. Along with my plantar fasciitis ball, I got some arthritis wonder, but it doesn't really seem to help. So I told her, listen, I think I wanna buy a nice guitar before I'm not able to play anymore. I thought I would do that when we retired, but maybe I need to buy that now. So that's why I'm not really crazy about Ash Wednesday, because it causes me to contemplate my frailty. I think it would be a lot better if maybe we could mix in some purple glitter with the ashes, maybe put some balloons in the sanctuary, or have the choir sing, put on a happy face from Bye Bye Birdie. Don't you think that would be a little more fun, a little more enjoyable? It is easy to forget Ash Wednesday. We do build our holy days around Sundays, and Ash Wednesday comes right in the middle of the week. It could be easy to forget, so maybe we should forget it. Who wants to be reminded of their fragility and mortality? I don't want to dwell on my plantar fasciitis or the pain in my hands or my cataracts. Does anybody really want to hear from dust you came and to dust you shall return. My sister says that's why she doesn't dust at her house. It might be somebody she knows. <laughs> or maybe I've misunderstood it all. Maybe it's really about recognizing the reality of time and being accountable for what we do with our time. Do our priorities reflect the faith and values that we profess? There are several passages of Scripture from both the Old and New Testament that we read on Ash Wednesday. The same passages, year after year, there's that passage from Genesis, of course, about the ashes. But then there's another passage from Joel the prophet about contemplating what he calls the day of the Lord and returning to the Lord with fasting. We often read Psalm 51, which is attributed to David after he reflected upon his sin with Bathsheba. It's a psalm of repentance. And then there's that passage from the sixth chapter of Matthew. It's from the Sermon on the Mount. Most everybody knows it and knows it pretty well, so that's why I thought I would read it from a different translation, the message translation. It's an idiomatic translation. So this is how he writes it, Matthew 6, the first six verses. Be especially careful when you're trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. This is Jesus speaking. 
It might be good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure. Play actors, I call them. Treating prayer meeting and street corners alike as a stage. Acting compassionate as long as someone else is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it quietly and unobtrusively. And when you come before God in prayer, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for their 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense His grace. It's a reminder, isn't it, that Jesus was always toughest on the religious people. And 2,000 years later, you know who the religious people are? The religious people are us, believers. He clearly encouraged piety, but he had a real disdain for false piety, for those who were self-righteous. Now, Matthew chapter 6, go back and read it. He goes on after this part to talk about storing up for yourselves not treasures on earth, but treasures in heaven. He says not to be fearful about the future because God will provide for us. And he talks about how God provides for sparrows and for the flowers. So he'll surely provide for us. It starts out, I know, the chapter starts out a little harsh, but it moves quickly toward the promise of something else if we submit ourselves to God. If we submit ourselves to God fully and completely, without hesitation, without reservation, honestly. I often say that too often we equate Christianity with being a good citizen, but our lives as followers of Jesus are to look different than they would otherwise. Do we display kindness and hospitality to others genuinely? Are we loving family and neighbor, friend and enemy? Are we generous or do we hoard? Are we a people of prayer? Are we learning the Word of God and applying it to our lives? Discipleship and authenticity in the journey, that's what Jesus asks for. Are we giving, surrendering, yielding ourselves to the one who created us from the dust of the earth? Ash Wednesday can be easy to forget, but I'll suggest we need it after all. The Lenten story begins with an uncomfortable stirring of the ashes to examine our priorities and sincerity, our commitment. Yet it culminates in a glorious day of resurrection. Because of Jesus, neither ashes nor dust are the last word. And I find strength and hope in that, even in my frailty. I hope you do too. Let us pray. Oh God, we're grateful that we can look forward to more than just a return to dust and ashes as our final destiny. Help us to be faithful in sharing that good news with a world that is so often in despair. For we pray it in the name of Jesus who came to tell us. Amen.
such beautiful music ministry. Thank you. I want to encourage you, if you have your bag, to take your ashes and your swab and be prepared for just a moment. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored into the participation and life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. So I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating upon God's holy word to make a right and beginning fitting for this time of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, we will participate in the centuries-old tradition of receiving the mark of ashes on our foreheads. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth, so we pray that you would grant these ashes may be a sign of our mortality, but also a sign of our penitence, that we may remember that it is by your gracious gift that we were given life, and through Jesus, everlasting life. For we are grateful for his message, for his life, and your spirit. Amen. So if you have your ashes, you can, with me, make the sign of the cross. If, if not, if you do not have ashes, you can just use your finger and we'll say these words together. I repent, I will believe, and I will live the gospel truth. the glory of God. Let us sing one more verse of I Surrender All. Marked by a cross, cherished and forgiven, we are all traveling together on the road of faith, called to be holy, called to know joy, joy, peace, life. We walk together the road of life, across deserts, across mountains. God is with us in our hearts, in our lives, as we make our journey. And as we make that journey, may peace be among you. Thank mm -hmm. you.